United Collegiate Umpires Mid-Atlantic Collegiate 2018 Video Play Review, Segment Number 2. We start this week with a seemingly innocuous play that occurred on a ground ball to the third baseman with no runners on. We see the batter runner starts to round first base as if the ball were in the outfield. While the play was correctly called, there are some things we can learn from at each position on the field. Starting with the plate umpire, he does a good job of getting his eyes around toward third base to assist the third base umpire with any possible out of play issues. However, once it is clear the ball is fielded cleanly, there is no longer relevant information on the left side of the infield. We should see an immediate turn of the head to identify the position of the batter runner. Normally, we would be concerned with runner's lane interference. Yes, that can happen on a ground ball to third base. Here, seeing the batter runner early in the play would tell us he is about to round first and put himself in jeopardy of being put out. This could be important if our first base umpire is unaware of the attempt towards second base and we need to consult as a crew. Moving to third base, we would like to see more urgency in working around the third baseman after the fair foul call and once he fields the baseball. Our next responsibility is at second base and we should plan to arrive there well ahead of the batter runner. Finally, you won. While he does a good job of identifying the intent of the batter runner attempting to advance, there are some mechanical fixes he could make. First, we should be getting off the line in a more aggressive manner. You can see the first base umpire arrives at his staging area about the same time the ball is arriving at first base. This prevents him from getting set and making a meaningful adjustment to what happens at first base. Let's look at the actions of the first baseman and think about what our wedge philosophy would tell us to do. As he moves to foul territory to field this throw, we know he will have to reach back to tag the runner. Our goal should be to mirror his movement toward foul territory, attempting to put ourselves in an area, a window if you will, where we can view the tag either meeting or missing the runner. The secondary benefit of this initial movement is this umpire would then be inside that window should another close tag play occur as the runner returns to first base. In this second play, crew communication and its potential impact is highlighted. As the first base umpire, when presented with a decision to go out or not on a fly ball, it is important to communicate to your plate umpire your intentions, especially when they might be outside the norm of our mechanic standards. In this play, U1 takes a fast developing line drive to a diving right fielder by immediately turning his back to the infield and locking down on the ball. When the ball is not caught, U1 remains in rotation and began heading towards the plate for his next responsibility. Although an argument can be made for simply going out on this ball, U1's attempt to take the catch in this manner and stay in rotation shows good instincts for the three-man system and is an acceptable way to handle this play. To more clearly indicate his intentions, a simple stop sign hand to the plate umpire as he turned to watch the ball would have clearly said to the plate umpire, I am taking this ball, but I am also going to stay in rotation. That would clearly tell the plate umpire his only responsibility on this play is the touch of first base and subsequently any play on the batter runner at third base. This allows the plate umpire to temper and time his movements towards the touch of first in a manner that allows him to get to third and plenty of time for a potential play. Remember, if the first base umpire goes out here, the plate umpire has any play back into first and U3 assumes responsibility for the batter runner at both second and third base. It is clear the plate umpire was stuck trying to decipher the first base umpire's movements and, as a result, got caught too far towards first base. Ideally, when it is clear the first base umpire will remain in rotation, the plate umpire should be a third of the way towards first with the batter runner five steps past first base on a dead sprint for second and possibly third base. The end result. While the plate umpire gets across the diamond, the two or three steps lost at the start of the play would have optimized his angle on the tag play at third base. We preach umpire communication, and at times that lends itself to a number of unnecessary hand motions and yelling, but there are a few key moments, this being one of them, where a simple hand motion can set the crew in line and give them a direction for success throughout the play. 
One final play, three important takeaways. Number one, as you three in this situation, once you identify a pop-up between third and home plate may come back fair and you have ensured the plate umpire has located the ball, it is appropriate to move across the diamond towards second base and leave the plate umpire to administer both the fair foul and catch no catch. Note that if you read the ball to be 100% foul, it is appropriate to stay with the ball as no play can subsequently develop at second base. Number two, once U3 made the decision to stay on the third base line, regardless of his rationale, both umpires do a good job here ensuring they stayed on the line. This was a particularly windy day and maintaining a body on the line for fair foul is extremely important. There was also a quick developing catch and both umpires do a nice job ensuring their line coverages. Number three, U1 does an excellent job reading U3's movements and slashes inside to take the batter runner to second base if, in fact, the ball did come back fair.